Let's receive right now our daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe we receive right now our daily bread, which you are so eager to give to us. Father, right now, I thank you that you put your thoughts into my mind. Clear, concise, accurate thoughts and your words into my mouth. And this word goes forth in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And it accomplishes what it is sent to do in every person that hears and receives it in Jesus' name. Now let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over the United States of America. Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. And Jesus is Lord of all. You know, every time we speak, Jesus is Lord, it says that every knee bows of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. So when we speak the name of Jesus, it has power. That God gave us that name. That's one of the things he, that we inherited was the name of Jesus that has the authority in our lives. So when we speak that name, it's as if Jesus himself were speaking what you desire. Now let's acknowledge our reception of the word of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you help me to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. I thank you, Father, that you open my ears to hear as the learned and that you speak your word so loud in my mind and in my ears, Father, that I hear it. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that this word goes into my heart and it grows up and it produces a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Praise God. We're going to jump right over to Ephesians chapter 6, where we are learning about um, the armor of God because the Lord has taught us in Psalms 91 that we tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and dragon do we trample under feet. And how do we do that? Well, of course, we do everything by faith. So now he's showing us that our armor, that he, we said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So say that, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I am strong in my mind. I am strong in my body. I am strong in my emotions. I am strong in the Lord in my spirit. I am strong in the Lord in my uh, money, in my possessions and things, in my finances. Praise God. And then we take unto us the whole armor of God, wherewith we are able to actually tread upon the lion and the adder and stand upon him, for sure. So we take our loins are girt about with truth. We take the breastplate of righteousness, which is all around us, we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. God's covenant of peace is with you and with me. Peace within, peace without, peace on every side, peace like you can't even imagine. And then uh, we take the helmet of salvation and Above all, we are taking the shield of faith wherewith we quench, extinguish every fiery dart of the wicked one. So he's teaching us about faith, which, like I said, is one of my favorite topics because it's with faith that we receive everything from our Father. 
and I'm going to uh, mention this again, that God has given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And we find in Ephesians 2 that he said, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should, should boast. Then in Romans chapter four, he says, so it is of faith that it might be by grace that the promise might be sure to all the seed. And that's every promise in the book. So is everything that's given to us, is it, it's a gift, it's grace. You didn't earn it, you can't earn it. <laughs> you don't receive anything from God by earning it. Everything is given to us. And that's why he said, so that the promise could be sure to all the seed, because that puts all of us on an even um, level of it's all ours. He gave us all the gift of faith. Now it's just up to us to learn how to use that faith and how to possess our land that has been given to us. All of the promises have been given to you and all of the promises have been given to me. So we learn what has been given to us, but right now we're learning how to possess what belongs to us. And it's through faith. He tells us that. And in Hebrews, he says that we are not to be slothful or lazy or stupid, but followers of them who through faith and steadfastness inherited the promises. So let's get busy and learn faith so that we can take what rightfully belongs to us. So what is faith? Faith is the heavenly substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How do we get faith? You tell me. So then, say it with me, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the word of God is the only source of God's faith. And the only way to get it down into our heart is by hearing it. Two ways to hear it. One is to listen to a teacher of faith, such as myself. Or um, the best way is to, along with that, then to take the word and he says, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So you take that word and you put it in your mouth. And as you do, that word goes into your heart. He says, what saith it? The word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. Now we are taking the word of faith itself. And you know, you can't pray for faith. The disciples said to the, to the Lord, to our Lord, he said, they said, uh, give us more faith, increase our faith. And he said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you would say. So you don't pray for faith. You hear the word to receive faith. And it's just that simple. So now we're looking at how faith operates. So let's go back over to Mark 11, because in this one verse, he is telling us he had, he had just demonstrated faith and he had just spoken to the fig tree and said, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. And then the next morning, as they were coming back, Peter called to remembrance what he had said and noticed that the fig tree was dried up from the roots. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, 
he shall have whatsoever he saith. You know, in, in four places, the Lord tells us that the just shall live by his faith. Saints, when you and I got born again, God did not intend for us to just fumble through life, stumble through life, and do the best we could. That's what the world does. The world, they have to toil and they have to labor for everything that they have. Because um, the word had said that the curse would be by the sweat of their brow. But we are born of God. And now we eat good by the fruit of our lips. And with the increase of our lips are we filled. God gave us this so that we could live out of the abundance, out of the abundant treasures that Jesus purchased for us. So how important is this to learn faith? It's vital. It's vital. And in this one verse, he gives us the instructions. I gave it to you yesterday, but let's go back through it again. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Let's do that again. Whosoever shall say unto, unto this mountain. And then he said, what the specific words, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Now just think about this. That to move a natural mountain, which he, he was talking about a physical mountain so they could see that. But this principle applies to everything. So you take a huge mountain, just take even Mount Everest. And he said that you could say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things that you said would come to pass, then it would come to pass. So just think about this. How long would it take in the natural for men to move any kind of a hill or a mountain with explosives, with dump trucks, with manpower. It would take sometimes maybe even years to do that. But Jesus is saying, with your faith, you could do it and it be done. Your faith is such a powerful force that God has given to you to move things out of your way. You know, there's been times where I've been driving down the road and it would look like um, a traffic backup. And I go, no, no, I cannot be hindered in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, it would just clear up. The angels go before us and make our ways perfect. And uh, a testimony that may, that I believe will bless you when my daughter was growing up, when she was about 10 years old, she had a big gap in her front two teeth. And I went to this scripture and I just thought, you know, if you can move mountains, you can move teeth. So I meditated on this and I spoke to those teeth to come together in the name of Jesus and that her teeth were the perfect shape the perfect, um, well, just perfect in every way. And um, those teeth came together. One time, we even took her to, um, to a dentist. And, well, actually, this was an orthodontist because the dentist had said that uh, normally young people get their wisdom teeth out. But I was just believing God, you know, that he wouldn't do that and that he would say that everything was perfect. And he did. He said, 
I normally suggest for young people to have their wisdom teeth out. But he said, after the x-rays, her teeth are perfect. Perfect. She never had to have braces. So you can speak to teeth. You can speak to your body and command it to do exactly what you desire for it to do. Let's go back to what Jesus said to the fig tree. No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. So you can say this, I am redeemed from sickness and disease forever, and no sickness and no disease will ever touch mine or my family's body hereafter forever in Jesus' name. You can also speak that over your money, that I am redeemed from lack, poverty, scarcity, and the want of all things. So for my long life on this earth, I never lack. I never, never have need of anything because I am abundantly supplied with the fatness of my father's house. Take the word of God and put it in your mouth. Remember that Jesus rebuked the fever off of Peter's mother-in-law. He spoke to that fever and he rebuked it and it left. So that's the power that you and I have in the name of Jesus. So let's go back over this. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Shall believe. So the word believe is not hoping that your words come to pass. Believe is an action word. It is not uh, wishing that your words would come to pass. It is not being optimistic. You know, being optimistic is a worldly term. We are not optimistic. We are believers. We believe God's word. And believing in the heart, and you've already planted the word so that you can believe, so you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth. And that's exactly the way it works. You decide what you want to have done and you believe it and you say it. And it is so easy. When my children were young and back then we ironed everything and I would have this mountain of, of ironing to do for my family. And I would look at it and I would just go, you are ironed and folded and put away. And you know, it was just like all of a sudden I had the uh, desire to do it and it got done so quick and put away. And I've even done that to my house. I would say, house, you are clean and organized in Jesus name. Do everything by faith um, and just watch, watch how your words work for you. Oh, I wanted to share this with you also, that um, we were at a faith convention where Fred Price was teaching and he said, he said, uh, this is the pro probably the only black man that you know that has a white rose. And Frank punched me and he said, if black Fred can have a white rose, then white Frank can have a black rose. And he started confessing that he had a black Rolls Royce and he desired one that had one of the, the older models that had, uh, I think they call it the flying lady on the front. And he even told our congregation, you know, that he had a black Rolls. Well, sometime after that, we got a call from uh, a friend of ours that had a, um, a dealership and he said, I have got your black rolls. And God provided the money for it. And we, we enjoyed that car for many years because it was a classic. But 
How did, why did it come? Because he declared it. Because he said it. So you can say, I have an abundance of brand new automobiles paid for in Jesus' name. Call your house paid in full. Speak to it. Say, house, you are paid in full. Get your bills out. Get your credit card bills out and say, you are paid in full in Jesus' name. Use your faith and watch your faith work. So let's go back to Mark eleven twenty four. 24. He says, because this is a very important key. He says, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. So what are we to believe? What are we to believe? We are to believe that those things that we say come to pass. And that's an important key. Those things that we say, we are to believe our every word comes to pass. That will totally transform your conversation, your vocabulary, because when you stop to think this word is going to come to pass, then you won't be saying a lot of the things that you've been saying before. So I remember um, hearing Gloria Copeland say that the Lord spoke to her and said that uh, inconsistency lies the power. In other words, as you are consistent with speaking what you desire to come to pass, then there's power in your words. Not saying, oh, I don't know how we'll ever get out of debt on one side and then saying we are debt free on the other side. No, just, just that one thing. We are debt free forever. And just keeping your words in line so that your words can work for you. David said in uh, Psalms 116.10, I believed Therefore have I spoken. And then in um, 2 Corinthians 4.11, he said, We also, having the same spirit of faith, we believe and therefore we speak. We believe and therefore we speak. And saints, this will work in every area of your life. And we believe and say, that our families are always safe, that the Lord is always our safety, that no evil shall ever befall us. And that, you know, we can, just like Jesus said, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. Then we can say, we can put the words always and never in our vocabulary. I am never sick. I am always healed. I am never in lack. I always have an abundance of money. And the Lord told me that one time. He said, don't ever say I don't have enough. You always say I always have too much. And there's been times that I would be standing at the cashier and it would look like there just wasn't enough in my purse. And I would say, uh, wait just a minute. I have more than enough. And sure enough, the money would just show up and I would always have more than enough. So that is my confession. I have too much money. I always have more than enough money. I have too many millions of dollars in Jesus' name. Say that. Say that. Your words are creating your future. And I will finish with this thought. Just a minute, because I had this written down. Your words, your faith, your faith-filled words, faith released in your words will create your future, your world, your family, your body, your finances, and all of your circumstances, and all of your paths are peace. And you know, just thinking about that, if you'll go back to the Psalms, we can say the very same things that David said because he gave us such powerful um, 
incorruptible seed to speak. And he was constantly, you look at the Psalms, he was constantly acknowledging and confessing what he believed. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That was a faith confession. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Oh, that's a good one. My, sto- my soul is restored in Jesus' name, even beyond what Adam had, because I have the mind of Christ. And then he says, um, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Confess that over your family, trusting totally in him. Well, we're going to learn some more about this tomorrow, but go to Mark eleven twenty two and put that word in your mouth and in your heart, I say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And I do not doubt in my heart, but I believe that those things that I say come to pass. Therefore, I have whatsoever I say. Oh, I wanted to share this other testimony with you. I had uh, uh, a growth come up on my eye last year. And even the grandchildren, the great granddaughters, they just got to touching it like, and, and one of them said, what's that? And I said, it's gone in Jesus name. But, and, and one of the children even suggested that I go have it uh, cut out. And I just thought, no, I'm, I have the gift of faith. I'm going to speak to that. And so I just commanded it to dry up and be gone in Jesus' name. And it did. And um, I remember years ago, I had um, just a, an ugly black something come up on my shoulder. I didn't say anything to Frank about it, but I just spoke to it and commanded it to uh, to dry up and be gone. And... For a couple of days, I just said, Lord, I thank you that it is it is gone. It's dried up. It's gone. And um, one day, it just fell off. And Frank said, you know, that had concerned me. But he never voiced it. He never said anything about it. And so you have authority over your body. Satan has no dominion over your body. You speak to your body and you command it to be exactly the way you want it to be. Command your bones to be healed and whole. Command your heart to to be perfect in Jesus' name. Command your eyes to see perfectly. Well, remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this word, and thank God that we are doers of the word and not hearers only.